cost to that gold was an incredible one for Helen Glover in particular. As a child, the Cornwall-born rower excelled in sport, representing England in field hockey and cross-country running. Despite her undoubted athletic ability, Helen wasn't able to make the step up to senior competition and instead went on to study sports science at Cardiff University. In 2007, Glover applied for a teacher training course with a view to becoming a PE teacher. Around the same time, she submitted an application to a UK sport initiative called Sporting Giants. Started by five-time Olympic champion Steve Redgrave, the scheme sought to attract tall athletes into sports such as rowing and volleyball, where height is an advantage. I just about made the grade um, for the height criteria and I thought I'd be fit enough, so I applied online and um, didn't think much of it. I actually, that summer, went away to Africa for three months and did some volunteer work out there and I actually got a text from my mum while I was out there saying, uh, when you get back, you're going to be tested for this rowing thing. On her return from Africa, 5 foot 10 inch Helen travelled to Bisham Abbey, where she was assessed by UK sports staff. She impressed them and was offered a place on the Sporting Giants scheme. I had sort of a bit of a crossroads of decisions, which was, am I going to pursue a career in rowing or am I going to carry on and become a teacher? Um, and what I did was kind of play it a little bit safe. So I started my teacher training and six months into it, I started my rowing training, which was really hard um, trying to juggle the two. Glover taught at a secondary school in Bath while she learned to row at the city's Minerva Rowing Club. Under the stewardship of British coach Paul Stannard, Helen made her debut in the boat. Yeah, I'd never never sat in a boat until 2008, and technique was zero. Um, so when I watched the Beijing Olympics, I was just just learning to row at that point, and I watched a different sport to what I was doing. Um, it looks so easy when you see it on TV, and I was falling out of the boat. I was, I mean, it's just so different when you're learning. And the, I think the technical side, I hadn't really appreciated how difficult that would be. I thought it's a physical sport. You know, I'll be, I've, you know, I'm fit enough. I'll be able to pick it up. Despite her initial problems, Helen soon got to grips with the sport. In 2010, she turned her back on teaching and started full-time training with the rest of the British rowing squad at the Redgrave Pinsent Lake in Caversham, Southern England. Glover was paired with Heather Stanning and allocated a new coach in Robin Williams. Former international lightweight rower, Williams was instantly impressed by what he saw. When I found out, you know, that Helen had only started rowing after the 2008 Beijing Olympics, um, I thought, oh, well, that's actually pretty spectacular. You know, that's that's a, um, she's at a very good standard given given that she's only been in the sport for a couple of years. After just a few weeks of training with Robin and Heather, Helen travelled to Slovenia for the first regatta of the 2010 World Cup Series. The duo finished in ninth place in the Coxless Pairs. Even though we came ninth, it excited me because I thought we've come ninth and we have so much to do. We've come ninth against the best crews in the world here. As soon as we crossed the line, I said to Heather, by the end of this year, we're going to beat every crew here. And we did. Uh, by the end of 2010. Helen's prediction was realised at the year-ending World Championships, where the pair clinched a shock silver medal. They were beaten to the gold by host nation New Zealand, who didn't compete at the duo's debut regatta. In 2011, Glover and Stanning performed even better, winning two of the three World Cup regattas to clinch the series. The Britons subsequently headed into that year's World Championships as favourites to win, but they were again beaten by New Zealand, this time by a mere eight hundredths of a second. So far, I've, I've been lucky enough that I've only really had one upset in my career, and that was getting a silver medal at a World Championships, which isn't a massive upset. And so, you know, I think I'm in a privileged position to say that. Um, having said that, we went into that race in 2011. Um, Good enough to win gold. The race itself uh, was, yeah, being beaten on the line. It was a really hard lesson, but one that was brilliant to have in that year because 
we then left that season going right we know what we've got to do and we're going to do it really well for the next eight months to make sure we turn up at the line in London the best team there is. <laughs> the duo's preparation for the Olympics couldn't have been better. They won all three World Cup regattas to clinch the series for a second consecutive year. The gold medal in London rounded off a brilliant campaign for the two Britons. I think the whole Olympic experience was just, well, faultless, really. The reaction was amazing. I mean, I, I couldn't ask for more from you know, the public and anyone who had watched the race all over the country. Looking back on it, it was one of the best periods of my life. This season, Helen will row with a new crewmate as Heather has returned to the British Army following a two-year sabbatical. In the first World Cup meeting of the season in Sydney, Helen won gold alongside rookie Polly Swan. It remains to be seen whether the pair will become regular partners. But Helen Glover has lofty ambitions in rowing, regardless of who sits with her in the boat. My long-term goal is definitely to sort of try and defend my title in Rio. Short term, within this next three years, I'd love to become a world champion. It's something I haven't done yet. Um, but I mean, if the day is right, looking at the world record and, and definitely looking at becoming a world champion.